Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here again. In this video, we're going to be going over the Auto AC Dodge Rams. Now, there's two types of Dodge Rams for the Auto AC. You have the single zone and the dual zone. Uh, and you're going to be getting something like this cover piece that goes onto here. Now, this cover piece is for those uh, buttons you have underneath your AC control temperature controls. Uh, this is for a Dodge Ram 2013 and above all the way to 2019. Now, 19, there are two versions. There is the classic version and the newer version. So this is only going to work on the classic ones. 2013 to 19, Dodge Ram. Those uh, buttons right below your AC controls, they go right here. And we have a cover piece for the here. This one you see here is a lot of circles. This is for the manual AC vehicle, so don't worry about that. And your temperature controls come up to the top. So you have temperature up and down, the hazard button, fan speed, defrost, and an AC off button. If we look at the back here, we can see that there's a white connection, and this white connection comes from our main harness. So leaving this, uh, just to remind you guys, this is a 12.1 inch screen. So at the back of the unit, we can look at the connections. Again, this cover piece goes here. You gotta move your factory buttons over to here. And if we look at the main harness, the main harness looks a little bit confusing, but one thing to first connect is this connector right here you're gonna be getting a decoder box. Now this decoder box, you're gonna plug into right here. After you've done that, on this side, there's nothing to plug in, leave this empty. Now that you have the red box connected, the only thing you're not connecting on this harness is this two-prong connector, it's a black and green. And speaking of this top connector up here, that is this connection right here. So let's show you how to connect this. We connect this to the top right here. After you've done that, you have this little connector that goes to the bottom right here. And you're gonna have your factory connection to here. You have the main connector. This is the main harness and your main connector goes right here. The other connectors we have are RCAs. You can see we have a bunch of RCAs here on that main connector. This big connector goes straight to the car. You can't miss that one. And you also have the radio antenna. This radio antenna, this goes to the factory antenna, and then this goes straight to the back of the unit. There's a radio port right here. So this goes to the car, this goes to the car. The only thing we have left is that two prong connector, black and green, again, not used. And we have a lot of RCAs. So these two, red and white, are labeled aux R and aux L. You have another one labeled CDL, CDR. If you can make an assumption, CDR is to retain the CD player sound. Aux R and Aux L is to retain the 3.5 jack in your factory vehicle. Some Dodge Rams have a three aux, aux port where you can hook up your phone for music. Uh, unfortunately, you can only retain one or the other. We'll show that later on this video. But the next one is a male RCA yellow. And this is where the factory video signal is going to be going through. So if you have a factory backup camera, this male RCA connects to the back of the unit right there. Other connections we have are these black ports right here, we'll get into that later, and also a GPS antenna connector. And that GPS antenna you do get, which is this GPS right here, and you connect that right there. And this is a magnetic piece that you go into the factory, inside your car or outside your car, you just gotta make sure you have green bars on that GPS monitor on the settings of the when this unit turns on. So these are the connections you're gonna be having. The next thing to check are these black connectors. And we're gonna be going over to what you get inside the box. Before we move on to these connectors right here on my left, you get this thing right here. It's a piece that you get. If you have three seats in your front, in the front uh, driver and passenger side, you have three seats, you're not gonna be using this. If you have two seats, you will be using this and it Latches on pretty simple. These two holes go into here. And this is again, if you have two seats in the front. So let's show you that right there. Goes on like that. And you get two clips. Now these two clips go on right here. It's kind of hard to see, but you have two clips. They go right here and right here. Now you also get a set of screws and you can see we are using the set of screws right here. One, two, three, four. And that's just a cover piece for this 
for this right here. If you have auto AC, you're gonna be using your factory and put these plates onto here. And you can use these screws if you need them. Otherwise, you can use the one that comes with the car. So now that we've gone through all that, let's go through these black connectors. And if we look at over here, these are what we get. So this is one set, this is another set. This set you need to put is your USB ports. All of our units have two USB ports. If you have built-in CarPlay, you're gonna be using one of these ports for the built-in CarPlay. Sometimes it has a label called OTG, then it would be that one. And this yellow connector you can see, it has a shape to it, a groove on the bottom, and a cut on the left side. And here we have an extender. It's, a, it's just an extension, you plug it into one of these. I don't recommend using it on the OTG one or your built-in CarPlay, but it just makes the USB longer so you can route it somewhere farther. This one is to retain one of the factory USB ports in your vehicle. So you just connect it to here. Again, I don't recommend using it on the OTG port because that's the built-in CarPlay. And you connect this to here, and then this goes straight to inside the car. It's a mini USB port. Now, there are a couple instances where the shape or the walls of here are not matching up on your vehicle. So you might need to trim it on our side and just connect it to the car. I have seen, however, sometimes the communication is not the most accurate from here. So I would test this before installing it. If uh, communication's not good, I suggest having just two USB ports, route them to outside your car, either to the glove compartment or somewhere you have access to. Some people put it in one of these holes. So I can demonstrate that right here. We have a yellow connector. This yellow connector goes straight to here. Once it goes there, I would route these two USB ports maybe to outside here, somewhere where I have access to it, maybe to the top. Now that you have that connected for the USB, this is mandatory for any updates or software or anything you wanna put a flash drive to and you wanna play music, such like that. The other two connectors we have are here. It's a, it's a bunch of RCAs. Now, this is to retain one of your factory. So looking at the white one, let's just show you where the positions go. The white one goes right here next to the yellow. The blue one goes right next to the white. Now, in terms of mandatory, these two are not necessary. You do need the yellow one, but the one that is more mandatory is probably this yellow, this white one. So this white one, you have a couple RCAs. You have a, I'll show you the pairs. You have an aux R, aux L, and an aux V. So these are audio and video inputs. So you wanna put something, a video feed into it with sound, then you would put it through these RCAs, and then on the unit, you would go to the AUX app and you would see that video feed as well as hear the sound from these RCAs. Unfortunately, if you want to retain the 3.5 jack, you have to hook up the ones labeled on the main harness, aux R and aux L, to the red and white right here. This will retain the factory 3.5 jack, but that just means you won't be able to go into the aux app to hear sound. You can only get video from that aux app. Same goes with the CD player. If you want to retain the factory CD sound, you have to plug in the white to white and the red to red, and this will retain the factory sound on the CD player. And yeah, you can't hear any other audio feed. You have to choose out of the three options to retain the factory aux port, retain the CD player sound, or have your own video and audio feed going through here. The other RCAs we have are RCAR and RCAL. Now this will correspond to the blue connector. Here we also have RCAR and RCAL. And this is if you wanna hook up an aftermarket sound system with four speakers. These are your four, channel, four channels for audio, left, right, back, and front. The other two are outs. So they're both RCA outs and one is CVBS out one and two, video output one and two. Now what this will do is it will only output video that you put in through the aux V port. So if you have the aux V and you're having a video feed going into the aux V, which is on the white connector, it will go out of this video out one and two on the blue connector. So you need a video in going through here to output to these. These video outs do not output the video feed on the unit it only outputs video feed that you feed in to the aux V port. So those are the quick rundown of the connections. 
Just the mandatory connections you need are the GPS antenna, radio connection, the main harness, make sure you have the RCA connected for the backup camera, the USB, you gotta have this one, and have the decoder box connected. This end, there's no connection to it, you just have one connection end, and the temperature or AC controls at the top here that we have connected here. Make sure you move those buttons over here with this um, cover piece that goes with it. That's how to connect the Dodge Ram units for the auto AC if you have single zone or dual zone. We do have on our product page how to tell whether you have single or dual zone. However, when you are making the order, it's the same unit for both unit for both single and dual, so there's no difference in the units. Thank you guys for watching. This is the Dodge Ram 12.1 unit. It is a PX6 unit. Some of them are Android 8 and 9, and uh, you can get built-in CarPlay with these units. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any other questions, uh, give us a call at 323-917-9038. And stay tuned for the next video. One thing to note, you also have a built-in microphone here. So you can use the built-in microphone. The factory microphone on the vehicle will not be used. And you have an RST button there that you can press with maybe like a wire. If I pull this cap off, I can actually go inside and press the button. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. The next video you might want to check out is uh, how to set the car settings for your Dodge Ram just to make sure that it's on the correct car type so the AC controls work and other functions as well. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.